Hey, hey, Marcus House with you here, and today we're talking about the latest version of SpaceX's Starship, and there have been a number of interesting discussions going on since Elon Musk's presentation. Now, in this topic, we are going to talk about whether it still makes sense to return Starship vessels to Earth after landing on Mars, or to simply leave them on the surface for other purposes. Now, although in the past this seemed to be a fairly clear-cut answer, currently it doesn't seem quite so obvious a choice. In fact, it may actually turn out to be, at least in the short term, quite detrimental to return them. This topic is one that warrants probably quite a lot of discussion, so I'd like to hear your opinions in the comments below. Perhaps this may even deserve a follow-up video to break this down and expand on in the future. So to keep up to date with this topic and all other SpaceX content on my channel, please do hit that subscribe button. It really does help me to keep creating this content for you. And there are loads more SpaceX and Starship updates to come, especially over the next exciting 12 months of SpaceX development anyway. So since 2016, we've seen a number of presentations starting off with the Massive Interplanetary Transport System, or ITS, which was designed to be 12 meters or 39 feet in diameter. Since then, of course, the vessel was scaled down being named the BFR, or the Big Falcon Rocket, then renamed again more recently to the Starship and Super Heavy. This is the current prototype at nine meters in diameter, and based on the massive size of this thing, you can probably imagine just how much larger the ITS design would have been if everything had remained at that scale. So, Starship. Now, I know, I know, it's not a ship that's going to travel to different stars. You've all made this perfectly clear in the comment thread every week. I didn't name it, that's just what it's called. So let's just continue on. A quick comparison of the design just to get started. The ITS was designed to be monumental. The proposal incorporated nine engines crammed into the ship component itself, compared to the six in the current stainless steel Starship design. The fuel tanks and both stages of the ITS launch vehicle were proposed to be constructed of lightweight yet strong carbon fiber, and even the propellant tanks would be made from this material. This at the time was a major change, of course, from the aluminum materials used with SpaceX's Falcon 9 and Falcon Heavy vehicles, and it was going to cost an arm and a leg to construct one of these ships and get it off to Mars. Now think back to Elon Musk's recent statement about the material cost for carbon fiber versus the new 301 stainless steel. It's $130,000 a ton for the carbon fiber and $2,500 a ton for the steel. So the steel is about 2% of the cost of the carbon fiber. So this is a good thing we changed from carbon fiber to steel, uh, by far. So $130,000 per tonne compared to the stainless steel at only $2,500 per tonne, over 50 times cheaper than the material that is now to be used to construct the vast majority of the Starship body. Not only that, it's quite a lot smaller than the ITS. Now, what about the Raptor engine itself? Elon said the other week that SpaceX hopes to be churning out an engine every day by early 2020, so it'd take six days, less than a week, to create the engines for one Starship. One week. This is pretty incredible stuff. Now the point I'm trying to make here is that compared to the original proposal with the ITS, the new vehicle is going to be many, many times more cost effective to create, especially when they're churning these vessels out rapidly. Back when we watched this ITS simulation landing on Mars, and after calculating the manufacturing costs, it just seemed crazy to not return it to Earth and reuse it repeatedly. It would have worked out monstrously expensive as a single-use Mars transfer vehicle, but perhaps this has now changed with the Starship. So this is an interesting debate to jump into, right? There's been a constant plan by SpaceX and Elon Musk since 2016, suggesting that the ITS, or the Starships, must return to Earth to make the colonization of Mars viable. But given the new design and the switch from carbon fiber to the much cheaper stainless steel, 
will it really be necessary to fly back this vessel considering the differences that we now see in its design compared to the ITS? Elon dropped another interesting potential plan in the recent presentation to land a few ships on Mars before sending people. Presumably this would mean there would be cargo ships with hundreds of tons of useful cargo already sitting there before humans even launch from the Earth. Now let's take this idea even further. A starship, one emptied of its cargo, is largely a strong airtight pressurized structure. It's around 50 meters high, 9 meters in diameter. With basic tools and welding equipment, this ship could be easily converted into a permanent building structure. Radiation exposure on Mars is high compared to Earth, and imagine, I guess, if storage and equipment was placed towards the top of the structure and on the sides as well. Water containers, food storage, even vertical farms could be created to help reduce the radiation getting through to the humans using it as a habitat. There is a lot of space in one of these vessels, but let's say there was 10 of them, maybe even 20 of them. Then there would be enough equipment and supplies for setting up a successful permanent base on Mars, a base that would not need settlers to return for many years. After this, trips back to Earth using fuel processed from manned industries on Mars would make the viability of returning much more realistic. Now, what do you think here? What is the value of a starship full of material as well as the main body of the vessel on Mars itself? It costs a huge amount to get it there, and to me it seems like it can be useful for any number of applications. As suggested in the presentation, the 301 steel itself is great material for general use, as it's easy to weld and manipulate as needed. You could even see an old version of the Starship being decommissioned and repurposed into completely different structures on Mars well before the settlement has industry that's able to create materials without deliveries from Earth. Now, compared to those original car carbon fiber materials designed in the interplanetary transport system, this is a game changer. Now let's look at the alternative here. We send Starship vessels back to Earth after refueling with liquid oxygen and liquid methane. There is a probability, like with any new technology, that the ship may not even make it back to Earth at all. Perhaps it explodes on Mars, perhaps it fails to re-enter and land correctly on Earth. It's essentially a bit of a risky choice to actually relaunch the thing from Mars. Now to ship the necessary cargo from Earth to Mars to make a similar sized airtight building than what the Starship structure would be, would take a huge amount of planning. All of the structure needed for new habitats needs to be contained within Starship, unpacked, assembled, made airtight. It all sounds like a huge amount of cargo. Instead of shipping materials for these structures, the cargo space could instead be filled with energy generation equipment, solar panels, mining equipment, boring machines, food, water, rovers, and of course, all the creature comforts needed to keep settlers happy, healthy, and as stress-free as possible. If the starships do not need to be refueled, then there is no need to spend enormous amounts of energy generating that fuel from the Mars atmosphere. It could instead be spent on more useful things like mining and new manufacturing industries, not to mention, of course, life support and all of those other things. Another interesting point to consider here is that the starships are going to evolve rapidly over the coming decades. A full Mars return mission for a single starship takes years. Pulling very rough numbers from a few sources, let's say it would take a few years to refuel a vessel on Mars and a heck of a lot of spent energy. The transfer window for Earth needs to be optimal to launch back, so we need to wait for that. We then have to wait for the trip to Earth itself. So wait, let's add all this up. It's around four to six months to travel to Mars, a few years refueling on Mars, and then awaiting a transfer window for a turn, another four to six months on the way back. So. Yeah, by the time the ship gets back, it's now several years old and frankly, probably already out of date compared to any of the new ships. Would SpaceX really reuse these ships at that point or would they just recycle them anyway? Here is another interesting point as well. After a reasonably large settlement is thriving on the surface of Mars, it is surely going to be useful to explore much more of the red planet. The atmosphere is really too thin to fly aircraft, too rough in the short term to drive around it, but using the same technology SpaceX are planning to utilize with Earth to Earth transportation, imagine that same technology on Mars. Because the gravity is much lower and the atmosphere very thin, a starship 
could have the capability to launch and land on other areas of the planet much, much easier than an interplanetary launch from Earth. Perhaps free Starship vessels on Mars could instead be used to hop around new areas helping to create new colonies. Perhaps even further down the track, satellites will be manufactured on the surface of Mars and launched into orbit on a reusable Starship. Who knows what possibilities can exist with all of this technology remaining on the surface of Mars. Now keep in mind here, I'm really only talking short term over the next few decades. After these ships stop evolving so rapidly, crew transport vessels traveling back and forward, I'm sure will be common. But over the next few decades, I'm not so sure. Will the new starships be more useful on Mars itself? Or should the plan be to return them to Earth after several years of refueling? Should that still be the goal? Let me know what you think in the comments. If you enjoyed this video, please consider clicking that thumbs up button. A huge thank you to my support crew listed here. If you're interested in these topics as well and would like to be involved with discussions around these specific areas, follow my Discord link or Twitter links in the description. In the tile in the bottom left today, we have my video from last week where I analyzed Elon Musk's Starship presentation. It sure has been extremely exciting seeing the Mark I Starship coming together. In the top right is my latest video. In the bottom right, a video that YouTube has selected from my channel just for you. Thank you all for watching, and we'll see you all in the next video.